Fortune taken out here for uh, by ninjas in pajamas. They do not want. Uh, again, you're going to be playing that one as well. He's really brought it back in this super week. We saw a fade out of, uh, you know, it wasn't really being picked whatsoever. And he's really done well with the picking and choosing the bullet times perfectly almost every single time. So not going to be there this time. Ari was the second man, another Bjergsen favorite. Oh yeah, I think they might even target them him with all three if they don't take away the Shen. And you know, it's funny because I think I talked about this the other day that cop over in North America for Curse. He's talked about, or he's actually asked by I believe Rivington, why don't why don't you ever play Misfortune anymore? And it, he said is because that was like the one champion he really enjoyed playing in the the spring split. That's the one champion he really felt like was better than everything else. Mm -hmm. And they finally played it again um, in the Super Week and he did fantastic with it. Well, the final bands were Evelyn towards Diamond and Zed here. Uh, by uh, Gambit towards Bjergs, and of course that left the Shen open, so we're gonna see Mima playing Shen. And on the other side, Thresh picked up for Voidal and Twisted Fate for Alexic. I was just looking at Diamond's face, he was smiling. Like, like, as in like, yes, we took away all your champions, Bjergsen. What are you gonna do right now? Uh, but with the Shen in, so we have that potential for that assassination squad coming in. Maluno, very strong Jarvan jungler, as we even do see Zyra come off the back. Of that. So we're gonna defeat, see Deficio on that yet again. And then over on Gambit's side, that Thresh, I mean, Voido, he's, he's actually made some fantastic pulls with that. And then the Twisted Fate, which we saw earlier on. Yeah, Twisted Fate, always a good one for uh, Alex H. Is that gonna be locked in as well? We've seen. Darren has some, uh, sorry, Darren has some really good performances as well, uh, bringing that Zach to the table. So, what are they going to finish off with here? AD carry possibly to take that away first. Hmm, I'm trying to think. If it would, it would most likely be a Varus for Genja. That seems to be like his go-to AD carry when that that is taken away. Or maybe even an Ash. Or an Ash, yeah. Yeah, and I'm wondering. The thing I'm confused about is, will the Zach be jungle or top lane? And usually it's top lane, but for some weird reason, I keep thinking Darren's actually going to play Rengar here against Mimer. I don't know. I just get the feeling. Is it your, is your spidey senses are tingling for some My reason? Lion senses? Lion senses. Are you lying to me? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so ninjas in pajamas and AD carry and the mid laner here is what they need to bring. Um, obviously could be a Zyra mid. Doubt it though. Um, that was... That's not something that Bjergsen would really uh, be favoring. Oh, a Cassidy, man. however, is something that he loves to play, and he is going to play it this time around. And also the Caitlyn in there for freeze. We should just change that champion's name to Castlewin, with the way it's been happening. <laughs> that was pretty bad, too, happening over this super week. But yes, we're going to see freeze on that Caitlyn. <laughs> it's done very well on. Thank you, Dirk, for laughing. And uh, it's a very strong pick. I mean, it's a very safe pick. It can do very well with it. You hurt very bad late game. You also have that range advantage over uh, a Varus, but Obviously, Vars does have that potential for that piercing arrow poke. I feel like you have something to say to me right now, Joe. <laughs> well, I've got nothing to say to you after that, I'm afraid. Uh, and so Gambit here then, what are they going to finish with? Voidal's uh, talking it up right now. And he looks you serious. Sure? He's half smiling, he's half serious. I'm not sure Come on. where he's going to oh. be. Aatrox, Darian was the first one to play him here in Europe. Oh, my line senses are wrong. But yeah, I mean, you're definitely right. He was the first one to bring it to European LCS. Then we saw Wicked pick it up. We saw Maluno using the jungle before. We saw Sinon using the jungle before. And against the Shen, I mean, we saw Wicked play against Shen earlier on. Didn't do too well, unfortunately, in his game. Um, or is, it, is that going to be a, a jungle, Aatrox? Because the Zack's there as well. It looks like That's it is. That's a possibility. It actually looks like it might be uh, going now. Obviously, they could switch here uh, things up last second, but I had a feeling that we might see uh, Diamond bringing out that Aatrox in the jungle. So, interesting to see how that one works. As I said, the loser of this game will pick up the fifth position in the summer split of the European LCS. The winner will go on to face Evil Geniuses for the third and fourth place playoff. And so potentially we could actually see these two teams meeting up in the playoffs in the first round if Gambit do does lose or if Gambit wins and then loses Evil Geniuses. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, you have to use this as practice. Like you can't fool around in this game. This is a major game that actually will kind of give you either motivation or will kind of shake what you believe in and coming into their uh, match in the playoffs. So then, right now we see ninjas in pajamas on your screens. We've seen them in a couple of different moods this weekend, looking pretty much downtrodden, but been pretty jubilant as well after a couple of those wins that they've picked up. Wondering which uh, faces they're going to be bringing out after this game here against Gambit. So we are going to be getting into things. Alex H certainly looking confident right now. Cheeky little smirk from him as we get things loaded back up in game. And there is Freeze himself who 
done fantastic since his addition to Ninjas in Pajamas. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, Edward was definitely right about his contribution to the, to the scene. I mean, he always said he was the best AD carry in Europe. And honestly, I kind of agree with that. He's pretty much right up there with everyone else. And it's going to come down to, is this Caitlyn going to do well in lane this time? I mean, it's been taken away from earlier on. And can Deficio work well with him on the Zyre, which he hasn't played that much during the spring split? Summer split, sorry. Yeah, it certainly hasn't. I mean, we've seen a lot of, of Nami from him. Uh, he's been bringing out the Thresh as well to the table. Obviously, that was taken away from him this time around. So we're going to find out here exactly how this one all kicks off. But one thing's true, if Gambit are the Gambit that we saw at the start of this final week, this super week, then Ninjas in Pajamas might be in for a bit of a shock. But we're going to find out. We're in game now. Ninjas in Pajamas versus Gambit. Level one here. There's quite a lot of danger from NIP's side as well. You have the likes of the Grasping Roots, the likes of the Taunt coming out of Shen, obviously, is in that top lane. So starting with the Taunt wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for him. Definitely wouldn't if they do want to go for any sort of level one aggression. I was taking a look at, at Rune Pages of Masteries and Diamond. He's actually running like a carry, or a carry page. Like he has... Um, the fl actually has the 13 foot armor pen, the 8%, and 4% lifesteal, which we never see on junglers to have that. That's usually like a carry kind of thing, as an AD carry kind of thing. And I'm curious, if he doesn't get go in the beginning, that rune page is going to mess him up. He's not going to be use or that useful later on in the game because he won't be tanky enough to dive in. Well, let's see what happens here then at level 1. We've got a couple of wards down up until now. Saw so NIP putting that ward down on the ramp. A ward going into the corner brush there on the top side of river as well. From Gambit's side of things. And Mima just sat in the death bush the entire time watching on and seeing exactly what would be going down. Similar uh, setup down on the bottom side of the map as well here. So kind of a mirror image from the start. It looks like the one thing that we can say is that we're going to have these 2v1 lanes coming in. Gambit have sent their duo to the top. Yeah, and I was actually thinking, like, is this what NIP wanted, or is this what Gambit wanted? And I think it's actually what Gambit wanted. They wanted... Actually, no, no, I think it's not what Gambit wanted. I think they wanted to be against that dual lane of NIP um, to really shut them down, because they are currently heading down. It looks like they're just going to ward up the blue, though. And Freeze, he's going to try to stop Diamond at this blue buff here. Actually getting the Peacemaker over there as well, and doing a good, decent amount of damage here to both Darian and Diamond. Diamond did manage to pick up that blue buff, tuck it inside of the brush so that Freeze wouldn't have any vision of that one. And that's a, a good defense from Gambit. But Freeze did force the, the smite to come out of him. So that means his red's going to be a little bit slower. And actually, Darren even going to be taking Wolves here because he would be in that 1v2 situation. But great job by Freeze. Didn't really miss out on anything. He took a little bit of damage, but he can heal that right back up with that Dorn's Blade and with his life still quintessence. And I saw Mimer as well there. Starting off on his Wolves now. It's a good pickup. Obviously, they spawn later into the game now. But the thing is, he wouldn't be getting any CS anyway if it had gone up to that top lane. And the thing is, is that if Diamond does gank that top lane when he is not level 2, he's going to die. Yeah. So he's going to be able to hit that level 2 as long as he gets back to that lane very quickly, but to pick up enough CS or enough minions to, uh, you know, take over into that. And that will make sure that he stays alive. And I really want to pay attention to Diamond. I really want to know what he's going to do because obviously we've seen Jungle Aatrox before he's done it. But the thing is, he makes these junglers that you never would have expected phenomenal. We look back at, you know, uh, Volibear, Nazis back in the spring split, he brought those out, and everyone followed suit. So, will that be a similar trend here for Aatrox? We'll find out what Diamond generally... I'm gonna say his first attempt with each champion that he brings out is not always the most successful. I think it's Karma versus Fnatic. Yeah. Wasn't successful at all, unfortunately. And we'll see how they uh, really go. If, if I remember correctly, the first game that they had with Volibear was also a loss, but he uh, actually continued to run that afterwards and obviously became one of the more picked champions overall in the LCS summer. Uh, sorry, Spring Split. Darren there taking a little bit of damage down in the bottom lane. Mima has already hit level three here up on the top side. Has got himself up into double figures in CS, as has Darian as well. So they're actually doing really well here, the, uh, the single laners. Yeah, they are, and I'm curious, is he going to be able to keep this up? Because, I mean, I don't want to take it away from him. Like, this, has been ha this happened before where he would keep up and see us in the beginning, but once the pressure comes on him a little bit, he kind of falls off and starts starts not getting as much CS. But luckily for him, they do have their double assassination combo with him and Bjergsen, so it's going to be really interesting to see if NIP can get that going. And if they do, 
Gambit's gonna have a tough time. However, you know, Twisted Fate, you're gonna have that ability to get around the map very quickly. So there we see Diamond coming over, putting a ward down for Alex there. Is he gonna be able to pull that stun card? Yes, he is. There's the diving Bjergsen knocked up, having to flash away, but look at that damage coming out. First blood will land, and it is gonna be Diamond that picks that one up. Solid, solid stuff. And well, that damage just so, so intense. Aatrox. And Diamond, he micromanaged his uh, Bloodthirst Blood Cost. I can't remember the name. Quick shot, help me out. Um, his Bloodthirst Blood Price. Um, cost Price. I see why you yeah, got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he managed it very well because he came in um, with the healing component of it, but he switched mid swing over to the extra damage component, and that's what spiked Bjergsen down. And he didn't expect that. And he even was forced to blow that flash, which kind of unfortunately worked against him. So, good start then for Gambit. We see Voidal just headed off there to get a ward down. Mime has actually come out here and I thought he was uh, just waiting for Voidal to throw out the hook before he would have uh, oh, shadow no. dashed away from it. Look what Gambit's doing. They yeah, did this against SK. Completely. They did this to Kevin and they shut him down so hard that SK didn't send a chance. I believe they even surrendered that game or kind of just lost it within like 25 minutes. But Gambit's doing a fantastic job of keeping a Mime away from the CS and taking advantage of his inexperience of being in the LCS so far. Yeah, freezing that lane out completely here. And Maluna's actually going to come up from this one, but honestly, oh, what are you going to do? This is this is really unfortunate because the only thing they can do, push it up together, shove that wave into the turret so it resets and he'll have a better chance. But that gives Diamond the opportunity to go for some ganks. He's already visiting this bottom lane, and Gander's going to get caught. Yeah, they're actually going to go into this one. The taunt coming down. There's the hook. Alex Hitch going to get involved, but that's down in the bottom lane. They're going for Deficio. He gets knocked up. He's a dead man. Alex Hitch picks up the kill. Freeze. Oh, actually, Deficio just missed there with a passive on towards Diamond. That could have opened it up for Freeze. But right now, Mima is underneath the turret. He is actually going to taunt under the turret. Genja is going to burn, but is he going to fall? Yes, he is. Maluno will pick up that one. But Maluno being hit by the turret as well. <laughs> and that will be two kills for Gambit for the one taken back. Good attempt, Voidal. Went for the flash hook. Hit a minion, but got the kill anyways. That's all yeah. that matters. And right now, Freeze. Ooh, this is not good for him. Diamond actually diving onto him, gonna get the slow down. Here comes the slingshot and a, f a flash away there from Freeze. Good decision overall. Yeah, and right now Gambit up four to one, have a pretty good gold lead so far. They're doing a fantastic job of just taking advantage of the... I was gonna say weaknesses of NIP, but taking advantage of what they know is gonna be powerful, and that's killing Bjergsen early on, and then pretty much forcing Mimer to play very defensive because now he can't build that tankiness that's been making him so successful with his assassination combo with his mid laner. So right now, Alex and Diamond going to be doing the blue. That will, of course, go over to Alex. It's just twisted. Luckily for Mimer, that, uh, that top lane has actually pushed right back onto his tower by now. So he's yeah. going to actually get a little bit of Farmer's Diary. And he's going to dive in on towards Freeze here. Piercing Arrow actually misses, but Let's Bounce comes in. Slow us down, and Darian is going to get the kill. Nothing that Deficio can really do to stop that one happening. Great work again. Great coordination from Gambit. They might take the turret there. Who would have thought an 80 carry makes a good ganker or not. <laughs> he came in from lane, went for the ganker there, and just like you said, fantastic communication, fantastic teamwork to just engage knowing Genja was there on his back, and either way, Freeze does have a CS advantage, he also doesn't have the three assists that Genja has under his belt at this point. So blue buff started by Maluno, Dire, uh, Diamond Dimerian. That's a, a bit of a mix between Darian and Diamond there. Uh, Björk, Björkson gonna come back and pick this one up, of course. We'll get himself back over into lane. He's actually ahead on CS there is Björkson. Probably just for the, the fact that Alex left lane for a while there to uh, gank up at the top. At uh, the bottom, sorry. And now it looks like Gambit's trying to freeze the lane yet again. Or they're just waiting for Freeze to visit that lane. Doesn't have that flash to escape here. And again, if he lands that chain of corruption, that is a very easy hook for Voidal to pretty much follow up on. Not to mention Freeze, he's only level 5. Well, he's going to hit the hook either way. Flazing back, there's Chain of Corruption. And that is a very dead Freeze, just like that. I mean, Freeze should know that Voidal's in that brush there the whole time and that the likelihood of him hitting a hook when he stands still is quite high. Yeah, it's... it's Actually, you know, it is... It's the funny thing is it can be harder to hit, yeah, though, sometimes because thinking. you try and predict a movement that's exactly. obviously not there. But he knew he wasn't seen right there, and... I got the gank right, the order wrong of what their abilities, but still fantastic teamwork yet again by Gamut shown right there. Dragon. And now, exactly like you said, they're gonna go for Dragon. This is free. Yeah, AD carry down. Now we're gonna see Bjergsen, or is he gonna come down for this one? 
And now that they actually realize that that one's going on, Bjergsen is going to try and get involved, but nothing really that they can do. That's a four-man dragon-killing Gambit team that will put them 4,000 gold into the lead. I mean, yeah, Bjergsen knew if he visited that dragon, that would be a death sentence. So he just wanted to farm up as much as possible and kind of shove that lane out a little bit more. So Diamond going to come around to the middle. Bjergsen actually has already used his Rift Walk there. Are they going to be able to get in? There is a slow. Alexic actually pulled the red card there in the end, so didn't have a stun anyway, even if they would have been able to do anything. And now Maluno is waiting to the side, but oh, if he goes into the lane. brush, he's spotted. Top lane. This is going to be a gank on Mimer yet again. Oh, no, they actually turn around, and I believe Alex is kind of curious if he is spotted by a ward, but it doesn't matter. Diamond's going to visit this top lane, and Mimer, he has to play this one out very well if he wants to be able to survive. Well, let's see here. Darien going underneath the turret. There is Twisted Fate coming in. The knock-up's been chained together, and Mimer not going to escape that one. It's Alex Hitch that picks up the kill, but Bjergsen comes up there as well using that teleport, but look how well they've switched off those turret hits. Diamond taking a lot, Darien taking a lot. Alex took the final two so that Darien wouldn't end up dying, and that will be another kill coming in. Good try from Bjergsen then, just uh, Riff walking wildly off into the bush, hoping that he could catch someone. Wrong bush, though, I'm afraid. And that's 4,000 gold now, the lead, and a 7-1 kill lead for Gambit. Yeah, unfortunately, that gank, it could have been avoided if there was a ward at the Wraith camp of Gambit. They would have been able to spot him coming in. That's usually where you do ward against a Twisted Fate, is those two crucial areas, which they haven't been able to do just yet. And Alex, two teleports, two ultimates, two kills. That's how you make Destiny work, that's for sure. We're trying to get some vision control down in this bottom lane, putting pink wards off by the side brushes. You see that dragon was taken just a little bit early up by Gambit, so that's not something of uh, real concern for them right now, but they don't want to give Diamond any more chances to get around. He's already got a couple of assists to his name, as we are going to see Alex Hitch here caught up in the Cataclysm. He's going to flash away. Are they going to try and dive here? Well, you know, only got the Dragon Strike to lash out, but can't get any kind of knock -off. And Joe, you asked earlier on today, are we going to see the Gambit that showed up to the Super Week, or looks are we going like to see it. the Gambit that's been playing today? And Yep, looks like it's the exact Gambit that we were looking forward to seeing yet again. And 7-1, just like you said, they have a huge goal lead at this point. They have Dragon Control. They have pretty much around the map control because of Alex being so effective with every ultimate he's been using. Got early Merc Treads, went for a Sheen for some extra oomph in there. And Bjergsen, the games he does amazing at, he usually picks up a kill like pre-level 7, pre-level 8. And he's just been shut down from that early gank that Diamond put up, uh, put onto him. Yeah, level 10 he is right now. We've not really seen much of him whatsoever, to be honest. Tried to get involved there with the uh, gank on Alex, but again, just doesn't really have the uh, the damage with that tier stacking up with uh, that catalyst coming in there. We are going to see the slow coming onto Bjergsen, but Diamond just trying to force him back here once again. Can't get the kill at this stage. And Bjergsen, his damage just hasn't really ramped up yet. I mean, it's kind of what a Kassadin will do, because he's building a large amount of pool, so he can obviously rip rock around, but it's unfortunate. Usually he's really dependent on getting those early kills, but I mean, we've seen Xpeki do phenomenally well Oops. on his uh, Kassadin a little bit earlier. Was that actually Diamond taking that blue? Yeah. That was, that was a purpose. It, 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 <laughs> My blue. It, it didn't mean to, I don't think. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they timed that one a little bit rough, but honestly, Alex is having uh, a pretty good time of things. Got his, he's got his cards to, to regen the man. Obviously, the, the cooldown reduction is not going to be there from it, but I'm not sure that he minds too much right now with how things are going, how well uh, Darian is running, uh, Diamond is running this Aatrox in the jungle anyway. I think, that actually, with that little mo mistake that kind of happened for Gambit, we're going to see an invade on the blue buff of NIP, potentially. Alex has his ultimate up, so we'll be able to spot them. We'll be able to get there very quickly. And if you take away a blue buff from a Kassadin, that is very powerful. Well, we're going to find out. Maluno's already headed over there. And Diamond's actually on his golem, so that's not going to happen here. They're not going to be able to uh, get that one in gear. That will be gifted over to Bjergsen. Trying to get into the swing. Things actually decently ahead in terms of the farm right now. Looking almost a, uh, a 10 CS lead. Actually, it's a 12 CS lead, so, you know, what are we going to do? More than 10. Uh, but now we see once again a dive coming into this top lane, and... Did someone just press the uh, repeat replay? button backstage? Because I'm quite sure I've already seen this scene being played out once before. Uh, that was, again, exactly the same as the kill before onto Mimer. Exactly. That can't be a replay. 
of what we saw earlier. That can't be exactly what we saw because Bjergsen didn't teleport in. True. But yeah, I mean, you're definitely right. That's exactly what they did. There's still nowhere to spot Alex ulting in for that, and they're taking advantage of that. I mean, we talked about earlier um, how NIP lost uh, uh, earlier on today, and the thing was, it was due to Bjergsen getting shut down and Mimer getting shut down. They didn't really care about freezing the Fusio too much because they realized they can end the game before AD carriers are really that big problem. So Bjergsen here, yeah, he's behind enemy lines, and he's going to see if they can kill this bottom lane off. Let's have a look at it. He's going to riff walk in. There's Ace in the hole coming down on towards Genja. And that was rather unspectacular in the end. They just couldn't get it working. Bjergsen, uh, Bjergsen comes across and really not much to write home about. And right now Gambit are actually putting down a ton of damage here onto this middle turret. And Maluno is just going to have to back away. A brilliant pick up there from Gambit. They stopped the gank in that, well, I say they stopped the gank in the bottom lane. It was more like Nip didn't react and start the gank in the bottom lane. And that will be the turret coming back. There was Diamond and Bjergsen facing off. And Bjergsen knows that he can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Diamond at this point. I'm not sure there's many people he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with right now. Maybe Genja, but I mean, with these dragons consistently being picked up for Gambit, with them taking two turrets and these global objectives, Genja will be very or will be strong enough very soon to be able to take him on 1v1 and yet another turret. Brilliant pick up once again. Second dragon of the game going to Gambit. And 8-1 in kills. And we're really not that far away from a 10,000 gold nope. lead, Jason. And we're only 16 minutes into this game. This is feeling very similar to Gambit versus SK and Lemon Dogs versus NIP in the way that they went down in terms of not really any resistance put up. Yeah, it's just, it, it's kind of unfortunate because, I mean, NIP, let, let's be honest, they want to put up resistance. They just don't have the possibility sure. of doing it right now. I mean, you saw the top lane, two ganks exactly similar, worked both times. Um, Dirksen got killed early on, wasn't able to really do anything against that, wasn't able to stop it, and might even see a gank yet again, but with Brock, he should be fine. Yeah, actually the hook had just come over from the side there as well. Chose the perfect time to rip walk, and actually Voidal here getting caught out. He's gonna get knocked up from this one. Can't see him escaping, and certainly not now. Ace in the hole comes through, and Diamond also might be trapped in middle. He's been taunted up. Can he jump away? No. Well, his blood well will get popped, and then he flashes, and then he jumps away. Brilliantly done there by Diamond. Stops two kills Darian's coming down. Done. Darian isn't done. Wow, Bjergsen with the read there. Actually, Riff walks away. Let's bounce coming through. Genja trying to catch up as well. He's got Flash. Is he going to Flash in there to try and get that Chain of Corruption down? Not just yet. Darian taunted. There is a Chain of Corruption. Goes on towards Mimer. But he's not got the damage to finish it. Great rush by Mimer on that Spirit Visage as well. Just to make sure he could survive this double AP composition that he's up against right now. And we talked about NIP with Resistance. They showed it right there. They put up a good fight, able to kill uh, uh, Voido, almost killed Diamond there too, and were able to skip their lives. But if they can't defend this turret, if this goes down, then that resistance they just put up means nothing. Well, there's a Lich Bane on Alex Hitch now as well, which means this damage is pretty massive as Maluno's going to throw down the Cataclysm, flashes away, but he's a dead man. Darian gets that one with the Ignite in the end. Now Mimer's coming over, but there's Bjergsen from the side, but look at the crowd control. He is going straight down from that. Couldn't even get the damage out to get one kill, and Genja is... No, it's not. <laughs> Voidal's going to get a double kill in there in the end. Genja tanks up the turret. And from being just one kill and a few turret hits, it turns into, you know, three kills and a turret taken down. And they're not stopping, they're still going. They have the opportunity. Bjergs is dead for another 15 seconds. Mimer's down for another 15 seconds. Freeze is the only one to defend against this. And with a strong dive team that Gambit has, he can't defend it. I mean, <laughs> it's just really unfortunate for NIP. They're going to lose this inhibitor at 18 minutes. And, and Joe, I noticed something. During the boot camp, I think Gambit trained Voidal to be very reminiscent of Edward because he's playing that carry support right now. 4-1. He's doing well. He's got more kills than Alex and Darian put together. Well, he's got the same as both of them <laughs> put together. Say, Matt, wait a minute. Matt, my uh, obvious strong point at this time of day. Um, but yeah, that's, again, just brilliant play from Gambit and... and Ninjas in pajamas are so far behind in this game that they can't really put up any kind of defense for it. And look at the gold. It's over 10k now. One thing I will say, though, is that we saw Gambit versus EG earlier on in the same situation. Well, obviously, not as, uh, one, not not, as one sided uh, for Gambit. <laughs> not as one sided then. But we've seen that Gambit can have an advantage and they can still lose games. 
NIP, there is always that chance for them to pretty much turn this around and pick up a victory. They do have a Kassadin. He can snowball very hard. They have a, a Freeze, or a Caitlyn, who's still decently well farmed right now. He's a little bit behind Genja, but still puts out a lot of damage. And if NIP, they make it to that late game, they have a very strong team composition. So NIP, all they need to do is just hold on right now, kind of stop the bleeding that's happening from them, and they can be able to turn this around. Well, they, they seem to have a, a very different idea of that at this point. I mean, we saw Bjergs in there getting around the back of them by using that teleport to get involved in the fight, and they just turn around and the CC was put together so nicely <laughs> yeah. that it actually did pretty much zero damage to anyone. Uh, that was perfect, and that just shows you that Gambit seems to be ready for anything that you throw at them right now. Diamond on this jungle Aatrox. Yeah, out of the jungle Aatrox we've seen, been the most impressive so far. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the early game pressure he put out was just crazy. The damage he did was fantastic. Um, the runes and mastery page he's been using has been working out well, but I'm curious, if he got shut down a little bit, if he got maybe counter-jungled, would he still be the strong? I mean, I mean, obviously he wouldn't, but what's the degree difference between those two? Well, <laughs> it, I don't think we can answer that one. I mean, you could always say that what if NIP would have got 10 kills in the first two minutes. Obviously never going to happen, but you, you just can't factor that in. I mean, all you can see is what, what, he's, what he's done at this point of the game, which is cause problems for NIP across the board and be incredibly strong at the early game, which got Bjergsen killed, which stopped Bjergsen being in any kind of threat at this stage. And NIP actually going in for a bit of a fight here. Mima going to get hooked and pulled out. The strangle thorns go down. Well, that's surely only going to delay proceedings here. Flash card, uh, Sun card comes out there. Maluna will actually have to flash away from it. And NIP lose one man and a whole host of health before they go through. Good block from Boydal, and they take the turret. And if he lose their tankiest man right now on that dive, and now Freeze is getting caught. Yeah, he's dead as well. Picked off by the piercing arrow. Finally, from Genja, who's now put 2-1-7. There's still no one that's got as many kills as Voidal, funnily enough, on the Gambit team, but crucially, they've all got kills at this stage, and we might see a 21 and a half minute Dragon, uh, Baron. We are. They are spotted, though. Bjergsen's come in, and he is going to cross over Ward, I believe. Yeah. He's going to be spotted. But what's he going to do? Is he going to kill Diamond? Gonna is he going to kill, kill Darian? They're both coming back to life. Sorry. Mm. Ooh, here it comes. Well, it's probably not going to kill anyone here. We are going to see Shen coming in, but will it be too late? Bjergsen is going to go down. Well, Mima's now left all on his own. Stun card goes down. There goes the finisher. And that will be it. Genji's actually burning there at the back from the Ignite. But Gambit turning that one around. And that that's the thing. The, the passives of both uh, of Diamond and of Darian, like they were low in that position. They could afford to actually die to the Baron and then come back. How messed up would it be if they ran a Zillion and a Yorick in this combo? <laughs> and then GA's everywhere for everyone. That would, that would suck <laughs> for any team playing against them. Um, but now, I mean, they did stop Baron at least. And if you were able to do that. But what I'm thinking about now is with this Dragon, with the items they built up, I mean, just look at the item difference that they currently have. Are they just going to push? Maybe go for Baron because they have complete control of it? Or just keep forcing these fights on AP, keep forcing these dives and just take or take complete advantage of it? Well, we're going to take Wraith for now. That's what I can answer you. <laughs> After their third dragon of this game picked up, we've got a Haunting Guys now added in there for Darien. Got the makings of the Zonya's Hourglass coming down as well for Alex Hitch as they spot them down at this bottom lane. And Mime says, no, I don't want to stay around here. I think I'll leave. Oh, this minion's going to push out, and this is going to be a free turret for uh, Gambit. Nothing that NIP can do. I think Mimer's definitely the man saying, guys, we should back away, because last time they tried to defend an inner turret, he was the one that died from that. So, yeah, we're going to give that one up. And Gambit, do they have the siege potential here? Obviously, you have some pretty good wave clear out of Freeze, but you also have amazing wave clear out of Alex, and he's pretty far ahead right now in terms of his items. And... With the dives we've seen already happening out of Gambit, they can they can afford to do it. I mean, just like you said, with those two champions that can die and come back to life, it really allows them to go for these dives if they want to. And it really forces NFP to make a decision. Do we try to defend it? Do we engage or do we just back away? Aaron's actually pulling a minion away from bottom to the mid lane right now. And that's because they want this inhibitor and what they want, they're gonna get this time around. So another big pickup here by Gambit. And they're 5,000 gold away from making it a 20k gold lead. And we're not even at the 30 minute mark of this game yet. This is a thoroughly one-sided affair. 
Where Gambit really running rings around Ninjas in pajamas. That inhibitor turret is taking a lot of damage as well. And it's really Alex Hitch that puts out the big chunks of damage in that one. Genja obviously putting out constant Ooh. as a flash comes in there. It was Bjergsen actually that flashed away from that. Uh, now Alex comes back in. And wait for this car to hit the turret. You'll see then how much damage he's actually going to be throwing in there. In the end, pulls the stun card out. And it's just a case of uh, when, I think, right now. That's how this game feels a case of when Gambit can break through. I think it's when Gambit's in a situation like this, they seldomly ever lose. They have that middle inhibitor down, that mini, uh, super mini wave is just pushing through. Someone on NIP has to deal with it, and at this point, Freeze doesn't have the damage to take it down very quickly. Neither does Bjergsen, and they're the two that's being depended on to clear that wave out. So they're going to lose either a Nexus turret or an inhibitor turret here. Well, they're going to fight for it, actually, as we see the Strangle Thorns go down. Bjergsen going to get stunned up at the back. Where is the Let's Bounce? There it is. Darian bouncing around the pack. Can't quite get out of the Cataclysm. Well, they've picked up a kill for it, and they're going to get inhibitor number two right here. And right now, another solid push straight through. And NIP realizing, you know what, guys? We have to fight. We have to fight for this one. Otherwise, they're just going to win anyway. And that will be inhibitor number two going down. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Bjergsen just teleported to a minion outside of his base, or inside of his base from his... Wow, that hook there from Boydle. Bjergsen's yeah. come through. There's a chain of corruption. And he goes down before he can actually finish off the kill there on towards Darian. And that's just the story of this game for NIP. And they are going to surrender this one. Gambit win the game. They're going to go through to have a rematch against Evil Geniuses coming up here in a little while. And it's hard to really say much about that game, Jason. Poor old Mimer in that top lane. We saw two repeat dives on him, three-man dives in the top lane. Oh, the two men plus Destiny coming in from Alex Itch. He actually ended 0-7-1. And just across the board, it wasn't a very happy game for NIP. No, it wasn't. And I mean, I think they're going to come back or come out of this game and just and just remember, you know, we're in playoffs. We were able to do it with their major wins they were able to pick up today. They're able to say that they're going to be going to Gamescom, going to be competing for their chance to go to World Finals. And one thing's for sure, right there, that, that game showed NIP's weakness. If Bjergsen gets shut down, if Mimer gets killed in that top lane, even if he gets Shen, then the other team can just kind of take that and run away with it. So they have a lot of things they need to fix in a very short amount of time. Yeah, and double the CS there for uh, Darian to Maimon. That was pretty much the case right from when Darian first hit double figures that Maimon just couldn't keep up with that because of the position that he was put in. Before yep. those dives came in, obviously it was that whole freezing of the lane in the top. So he yeah. just couldn't come... He couldn't get anywhere near it, not near the experience, not near the farm, nothing. And he was just outplayed in that top lane. And really, NIP tried to bring him back in there. They pushed Maluno through the lane to try and push the wave back on the turret. They got one kill, but then they both died in the end to Voidal, who, by the way, ended the game at 4-1-5, which is joint highest amount of kills in the game with uh, Genja, his AD carry. So those two seem to have found their partnership. Yeah, and I, I don't think we've seen a team do what Gambit's done in terms of that strategy of freezing the lane. We've seen teams, you know, do it, obviously, but we've never seen a team be as successful as Gambit has with it. I mean, think back to their game versus SK. They kept Kevin out of the game for the entirety of it. I mean, he didn't he didn't hit level three until, like, was it eight minutes into the game? Something ridiculous. And they were able to do that again to Mimer, just like you said. Mm. And the thing was, when that happens, NIP recognized it. Like, they knew exactly what Gambit was doing, and they tried to force that response. They tried to make something happen to try to stop it. And unfortunately, it didn't work out for them. And then from that, Gambit was just able to snowball that game. And a brilliant performance it was as well by Gambit. They're going to move to play EG in the next one. But for now, I'm going to head to Demon and Quickshot to break down all the match. Thank you very much, Joe. And well, an interesting game there. And straight away from the picks and bands, it looked like Gambit that's the idea of what exactly they were going to do in that game. Yeah, we once again seen uh, uh, Alex playing Twisted Fight. He's, he's one of the few people that has played over the course of the weekend. And interestingly enough, Aatrox was picked up but for Diamond Prox in the yeah. jungle. And, you know, Jason was questioning the decision early on and saying, well, what do we feel about it? But my word, did Diamond make that work? And he worked for Cyanide earlier on as well. So this is a couple of times now Aatrox starting to make those appearances in jungle. So it, working very well. Yeah, it's something that can work well for you when you're able to consistently make your aggressive ganks work. And for a team like Gambit, who know how to make ganks work, obviously it pays off for them. Because what we've seen was two distinct things happening during the course of the game for Gambit. Number one was Diamond Prox making successful ganks with Aatrox in multiple lanes. And number two was Alex Hitch using Destiny to once again consistently pick up kills. 
you know, we've seen Aatrox going top lane. At one point, Joven said, hang on, did somebody hit the replay button? Because it was the exact same three-man dive. And talking about those ganks, they worked very well for Gambit and not very well at all for Ninjas in Pajamas. <laughs> Did they, were they just too tired for today? Were they, has, it, has it just finally got to them? Are they just happy? We heard about Deficio earlier so saying, I'm just happy to get there. I've got to be very honest. I was watching the player camps during the course of the match, looking at the players' faces, and also, more importantly, looking at the decisions in-game. And, you know, when you think about the two-man tower dive in the top lane, Jarvan and Shen diving against the Thresh. They got caught by a flag, got caught by a hook. And it's like, what did you think was going to happen? There's not exactly the biggest amount of burst damage between a Jarvan and Shen. So I just think the incredibly long day, you know, NIP played a number of games. Everyone's been stressed and worried, trying to do math, trying to figure out all possibilities. And I think it just got to them. I mean, it is almost like one after one already. And it just affected the decision making in the matchup. Yeah, absolutely. So we do have an interview already, and it's going to be actually Alex Sitch. He'll be standing by with shocks, and we don't want to delay him too much longer because, of course, it's going to be Gamut versus Evil Geniuses. We'll be coming up after this. Thank you very much, D Man. Um, Alex, you were joking with Krepo just now. Can we make this last one a best of three or a best of five? Oh, best think. of seven we play now. <laughs> no, um, but seriously, uh, going into the last matchup against NIP, it seemed like you wanted mainly to shut Bjorkson down early so he couldn't get on, couldn't get rolling. Is that the fact? Uh, no, that wasn't the plan. The plan was just like to, for me to farm level six and then Ghana after that. But uh, Diamond was just in time and Bjorkson was a bit overextending mid. So we got TF Atrox combo. It was perfect to gank him. And we decided that it's a good time to kill him. And after we killed him first time, it was free game for me and for Diamond to roam around the map. Yeah, very good game from you guys. Um, you had a lot of, you had to pick yourself up after that last loss. It seemed like you guys were really down against that one against EG. And we saw you kind of discussing with the rest of your teammates and Darian, especially what was going on there. Uh, no, we were just discussing that moment at Baron that cost us a game. And you no, know, we still. It was uh, everyone's fault because like Diamond shouldn't go there, engage, I shouldn't uh, TP there, Genja should be around there and uh, like you, you can't decide who, who did wrong there so we were trying to make everyone like it's your fault, not it's your fault, not it's your <laughs> fault. So you know just like it's the game and sometimes you just play bad and nothing to do. We just needed to go through it and just play our game against NAP. Yeah, sometimes you play bad, sometimes you play good. What's it going to be for this next one? A rematch. You can get revenge on evil geniuses. We will play best of seven, and the first that falls asleep, they will lose. <laughs> and you guys are very good at uh, training in your dreams, so that should be no problem. Thank you very much, and good luck in the upcoming match.